Item number five, number 7157, sub A. Chairwoman Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. House Bill 7157, substitute A, by Representative Bennett, would mandate that commencing October 1, 2020, the minimum wage will be increased to 1150 per hour. It is a good bill, and I move its passage. Chairwoman Williams moves passage. That is seconded by Chairman McNamara, Representative Diaz, Representative Hull, Representative Tanzi, Representative Jackson, Representative Slater, Representative Falella, Representative Hanley, Representative Handy, Representative Shanley, Representative Barros, Representative Messia, Representative Alzate, Representative Casimiro, Representative Kazarian, Chairman Casey, Chairman Solomon, Representative Johnson, Representative Blaise Juski, Representative Vigello, Representative Walsh, Representative Fogarty, Representative Kazar. Chairman Abney, Representative Donovan, Representative Ringland Vassal, Chairwoman Ackman, Representative Carson, Chairman Amori, Lita Shikachi, Representative Ruggiero, Representative McEntee, Chairman Craven, Representative McCannon, Representative Speakman, Representative Malay, Representative Almeida, Representative Yuchi, Representative Morin, Representative Ella Wilkinson, and Chairwoman Williams. Representative Coffrand. Representative Wranglin Vassal. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to make some comments on the bill, please. Oh, proceed. Please. Thank you, Speaker. Every time that there's an increase in the minimum wage, I do a happy dance. I want to thank the sponsor, Rep. Bennett, for this bill and for all the work that he has done over the years but more so to get this bill to the floor today. And while I celebrate this, 11.50 an hour come this October, I am thinking of the struggling families and I know that this one dollar, it means a lot to them, but it's not enough. I think this is a good first step. Today I am thinking of the mom who worked 40 hours. We played phone tags yesterday. She has two young boys. They're actually in my school. Yesterday my worthy colleagues she and her boys became homeless. I will call her later today, because I got home late yesterday and I was not able to call her. I promised her that I would check around to see if there's anyone that I know who has a rental apartment that's reasonable for her to afford. Because see, the right to housing is a civil rights issue. I have another mom who got in touch with me. I shared her story last year on this very floor. She's paying high rent, high medical costs, while caring for her children. Ladies and gentlemen, the truth is, these families that I talk to you about, I know them. I see them every day. I listen to their stories. We must do better. We must commit to doing better. Before I came here today, I was working with a high school senior. I was trying my very best to get him to cross that line in June. 
what is your point of order, Chairwoman? And no disrespect to my colleague in government, but we are, we're dealing with the bill before us. And I sympathize and I understand the plight. I've been there and I know many people that are there. But we need to deal with this issue and then come back to what she would like to do as well. And if I'm wrong, I can take it, but um, that's my point of order. Your point of order is sustained, but I'm gonna give you some latitude, Representative Wrangler Vassal. Please try to stay on the merits of the bill, the bill that's before us understanding that you're free to put in whatever legislation you want at any time. But I want to give you some latitude because it is a broad issue yeah. and it impacts a lot of things. So please I, proceed. I really appreciate you, Speaker Mattiello. And I think this is the problem. We don't connect the dots in this room. We don't, and that's a problem. My worthy colleagues, I want you to know that families are hurting. I want you to know that passing this bill today and raising the minimum wage is good. It's a good first step. But we must be bold. We must be intentional. Speaker Mariella, four years ago when I sat with you, I told you that we could do this before Massachusetts. I told you that we could be bold. We need to do this for our families. I see these kids every single day. I talk to their families. We talk a lot about supporting children. So let me tell you something. As someone who has been teaching for over 30 years, I started my career in Kingston, Jamaica. If we are gonna support children, we better support families because children are not just units by themselves. So yes. Time, I'll give you another 20 seconds, proceed. Thank you for this, because this means a lot to families that are hurting, but it's not good enough. We must get to a predictable path, and that's why I have introduced my bill that will put us on a path to $15 an hour by 2025. We can do that. It's a moral imperative, and we must be courageous and do that. Chairwoman Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise, and again I rise, in favor of this bill. 7157 substitute A. I've often heard that a bird in hand is better than two in a bush. And while I support wholeheartedly $15, 16, 17, and up an hour. We have a deficit that this room has to connect the dots with. We have inherited a debacle of a school system that we have to figure out where we're going to get the necessary monies to make it finally work right. We have done a disservice for over 40 years of children in the capital city that is beyond disheartening. So when you talk about a dollar raise, it beats 50 cents. And it beats tabling this bill and getting nothing. Yes, I do believe it should be 15 or more. However, it can't be. So if anyone who's ready to collect, connect anybody's dots that's imaginary around, do so by voting against this bill. And then go and tell those people who are looking for this dollar that you wanted it to be 15. 
It just can't happen. And I thank you for at least increasing it again. Small steps is appreciated sometimes, and this is one of those times that it's appreciated. It beats nothing. Thank you. Whip Chippendale. Thank you, Speaker. I'm going to connect the dot that we haven't heard of yet this year, and that dot is the business community that's going to be impacted by this. And I know that the businesses are the bad guys and they should suffer all the ills of society, but the actual impact on a business to this is very simple. The minimum wage is that, it's the minimum, it's the bottom, it's the lowest. When that goes up, every other wage above that goes up as well. It has to go up. Well, why? Let's take a hospitality industry, a restaurant. Minimum wage, dishwasher, gets minimum wage. The person who's worked there for a couple of years or however long has become a supervisor. Now they're making a couple of bucks over minimum wage or whatever, what have you. And then there's that other person who worked their way up from there and they're a manager. And then there's the general manager and each one of those folks work their way up. So when you lower or when you raise the lower, those all have to go up as well. Because if I'm the supervisor who worked my butt off for two years to get extra money in my salary, and then someone walking in the door is now getting a couple of cents less than me, I'm not going to be happy with that. So therefore, my boss is going to have to compensate me appropriately. It doesn't impact just the minimum wage earners. It impacts everyone. And I'm going to tell you very plainly and very bluntly how we business people operate. Especially in the restaurant industry, which is not my industry, but they, they're working in a 3 to 6 to 8% profit margin. This is how business owners work. Here's the revenue, here's the expense. My expenses just went up because minimum wage just went up and therefore all wages just went up. And my expenses went up by 20%. I must now somehow compensate for that. And here's how we do it. We fire 20% of the people who are working for us because we cannot afford to pay them. Because the only, only other option is we become a nonprofit and we do it for the love of doing what we do, or we shut our doors and no one has a job. I just read a great article in the paper or wherever I read it online or something, where a company voluntarily has initiated robust compensation packages, a little bit above minimum wage, great health care, and what they've noticed is talent is coming to them. They're not competing because the people want to work for them. That company made a good decision to get good help and make their business a healthier business. They made that decision themselves, not with the government's gun to the back of their head. They are consequently enjoying the rewards of that decision. They have long, longer term employees, they're happier, they're more productive, etc., etc. We cannot mandate everything and expect it to work out the way we think in utopia. It doesn't. The real world in business is bottom lines. If you can't afford to pay the bills, you shut the doors. And no one's making a livable wage at that point. For that reason, I will be opposed to this bill. Thank you. Representative McLaughlin. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, members of the House, I'd, I'd like to address the uh, uh, sponsor of the bill. Uh, that would be uh, Rob Bennett. The sponsor of the Chairman bill Bennett. Is Chairman Bennett. Well, uh, if the chairman will yield, he will yield. Otherwise, it should be directed to the chairwoman of the committee. But oh, go ahead. Let's okay, give this a try. Uh, chairwoman, uh, I appreciate it, Speaker. Chairwoman Speaker. Williams, please. Just, just a couple of questions. Uh, in reference oh. to uh, yeah, Chair, Chair Williams, in reference to the, the region, okay, Massachusetts, Connecticut, where were we at? I, you kept doing this kind of stuff. I couldn't hear what you were saying. I said in reference to the region, Massachusetts and Connecticut, uh, where were we at minimum wage-wise? 
I think right now uh, Massachusetts may be higher than us, but I don't know about Connecticut and New York and those other regions. Okay. But and, it, and, and, and they're staggered. It's not where flat out. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, the only other thing I, I would add is, you know, uh, on a minimum wage, you know, everything goes up every year, you know. And uh, I'm looking, health care goes up, you know. Uh, families have a hard time, you know, they're struggling, you know. And uh, the health care advocates, they don't care, you know. You know, they want their premiums, and uh, you got two or three kids. It's kind of hard. So, with that said, uh, I will be voting for the minimum wage. You know, the what is it, dollar? Yeah. You know, thank you, Representative Kazan. Um, thank you, Speaker. Um, I rise in support of this bill, um, contingent on the fact that this is only a starting point and we need to do quite a bit better for the people of Rhode Island. Um, right now, we, we need to remember that um, one in eight people in Rhode Island live in poverty. Um, an increase of a dollar an hour um, for their wages is, just, is not enough to bring them out of poverty and we need to continue on this road. So. While I applaud this effort, I, like my passionate colleagues, think we have got to do better. Um, when we talk about minimum wage, I think we want to be reminded that we are talking about the majority of minimum wage workers in our state and in our country are women and they are people of color. They are people who are continuously, systematically um, at the lower end of socioeconomic opportunity. Um, so yes, this is great. I'm glad we're doing this in February, but we have got to do more um, and this should be a path to success so that when we come back here in the future, we're talking about a significantly lower percentage of Rhode Islanders in poverty. Right now that is at 14, between 13 and 14 percent with the majority of that being women and people of color. It is long overdue to have a system that takes care of all the people of the state and brings everybody up. Additionally, when we raise, um, when we raise wages, we raise um, spending power in our communities. So while I understand the concern that many small businesses have, we put more money in the pockets of members of our community to spend in our community when we raise wages. So there's an economic development piece of this that very often is subsumed with some worries. Many other communities around the country have put themselves on the path to $15 an hour, including our neighboring states of Connecticut and Massachusetts. We can do the same, and I think we need to do the same to remain competitive. This is a good start. Thank you. Lita Filippi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I've made this argument before. I won't belabor it too long. We're not economists. We should find a number that works, attach it to the consumer price index, and be done with it. Every year, someone will get a minimum wage increase, and we don't have to come back here and pretend that we know what the bare minimum is for someone to survive. It should happen every year based on the CPI. Businesses at that point will have predictability. This is not predictable for businesses because they don't know what we're going to do every year. Find a number that works, attach it to the CPI, and then we'll find something else to fight about. Thank you. Representative Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question for the chairwoman? Chairwoman Williams, will you yield? We have oh, a question. I, she will. Sorry. Proceed. Uh, so I'm just curious if the tipped minimum is included in this, like if the tipped minimum goes up a dollar in addition to the minimum wage, or is it just one dollar for minimum wage? It's just one dollar for minimum wage. Thank you, Chairwoman. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Um, that now means that we've raised the minimum wage four times since raising the tipped minimum by one dollar, which effectively negates any raise that we gave those women five years ago. 22,000 workers in Rhode Island are tipped workers. 70% of them are women. Every year that we do not give them a crumb off this very generous table every year that we tell them that them and their families can struggle and suffer and starve is a year that we are saying that 70% of the women who are waiting tables deserve to feed you but they don't deserve to feed themselves. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chairman Amori. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of this, uh, this bill, but to, to uh, specifically answer Representative McLaughlin's question, Massachusetts minimum wage is 12.75. Uh, Connecticut will be 12 in September. So if you're in my district in East Providence and you have a stop and shop uh, in, in East Providence and a stop and shop in Seekonk, less than a half a mile from each other, the stop and shop in East Providence has trouble getting help because you get paid so much more uh, at the stop show. East Providence uh, in, uh, residents go across the line and work there. Um, and I agree with Leader Filippi. I think we can do this uh, through CPI going forward. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Tabone. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I, um, I rise in support of this bill because it's the right thing to do. And it's important that obviously we are cognizant of the fact that uh, families need more. My family grew up, I grew up poor. My family grew up with very little. I remember my parents, uh, my dad talking about getting a 25 cent raise and it was a big deal. Uh, and, but that, and that 25 cents was gone by the time that he even thought about um, you know, that check. But I'm also, I, I think that it's important that we, re, uh, we realize that, well, let me take it back for a second. When we wanted something more, my mom, she cut hair, she did all types of things. Uh, she did Sweet 15 dresses, she did bouquets, she did all types of, of things. My parents had um, uh, part-time jobs and I practically grew up at the Boys and Girls Club. I'm not saying that's the right way or the wrong way, but we have to be understanding of also those business owners that when the recession hit in 2008, some of their businesses either closed or were on the verge of closing. I have a constituent who has a big tax bill right now with Rhode Island because out of his own money, his after-tax money, he kept his company going for an extra six or seven months paying his employees in hopes of, of the recession, getting through the recession and uh, not having to lay anybody off. And now he has a huge debt with the state and the feds for trying to do the right thing. We need to be understanding of those people who before they open the door, they have huge overheads and sometimes their life savings are in there. So believe me, Nothing makes me happier than thinking that we can help out the majority of the families in Rhode Island. But as we stated uh, con uh, continuously, the, the engine, the economic engines of, of our state and many other states are small businesses. And we could cripple them. I, there's one particular business in Pawtucket uh, that's a manufacturing business that's gone up and down, up and down. And I remember going there and I saw a lady pushing a cart. She must have been 70. And I asked the owner, I, I, you know, what's her job? He's like, she's like, she really doesn't have a job. I kind of created that to give her something because uh, she can't live off what she makes uh, in regards to retirement. And, and, and so I said, well, how much does she make? He's like, I pay her minimum wage because I really don't need her but I have about four people like that that I can sustain. But if the minimum wage goes up, I can't keep them because I have to give everybody else some kind of increase. So uh, again, I just want to say, uh, let's continue to explore different ways. I usually bring up the fact that I hate when we compare ourselves to our neighboring states because Massachusetts's economy is a lot different than ours. Connecticut's economy is a lot different than ours. And when, you know, New York is talking about $15 an hour, I mean, and Boston, their economies have not suffered like ours. We were the first into the recession, the last one out. We need to remember that. And let's focus on building our economy. Let's help out as many as we can. Let's help out the most vulnerable, but let's not forget that if we help out these small businesses as well, and they grow and they flourish, then we can help out the whole state as a, uh, in general. Thank you. Representative Ringland Vassell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to shout it on the mountaintop. I want to be abundantly clear. I am in strong support. Let me reiterate let me re-emphasize, I am in strong support of this raise in the minimum wage. So I don't want it to get it all mixed up. 
All right, but let me just share a couple things. This is Black History Month, and we're doing a lot of dancing in here about that, which we should. Black women make 61 cents to every dollar that a white male makes. Let's remember that. Let's remember that Massachusetts is twelve dollars and seventy-five cents. By by twenty twenty-four, they will be fifteen dollars an hour. Let's not mix it up. We will pass in a few minutes the gun legislation. Let me just remind us. Poverty and hold on, gun hold violence. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Representative. I have a point of order. What's your point of order, Representative? Thank Diaz? you, Mrs. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, with all the kind words and, and that you can imagine, I would like to ask Rev. Marcia Rengo Vessel to stay in the bill because we are addressing minimum wage. We don't need to dance in our realm, Mr. Speaker. It's a long day for many of us, and we ask her, also, when she mentioned about the w black woman um, rate is less, the Latinas are less, less than the black woman. So I don't want to see a f any race fighting here. So Mr. Speaker, please keep her in the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. There's a point of order. I'm not going to rule on it, but I want, please stay on the issue that's before us, Representative Ranglin Vassal, because I don't want to sustain a point of order. It, we're on the bill, there's a dollar raise in the bill, please speak to it. Proceed. Thank you, Speaker. If you need to sustain it, I think you should. I'm not looking for any special treatment here. Uh, not, there's no special treatment given. I want to give you as much leeway as possible because it is a broad issue and I recognize that, but you're going, you can't go from minimum wage to guns and to other issues. It's... My frustration is you that have, we... Your frustration has to be to the, medi no, to the merits of the bill, so proceed. To the merits of the bill, because we do not connect the dots. We do not see a connection between a $15 living wage and poverty. All right, Chairwoman Williams, we are going to give her latitude. I thank, thank everybody, but please, we're going to err on the side of connecting dots. So proceed, Representative Ranglin Vassal. Just be as concise as you possibly can. Proceed. I am going to conclude by saying all my neighbors know that I came to the chamber to fight for a $15 living wage. And thank you, Speaker. I will sit down right now because I want to, but I will say that my fight is not political. My fight is personal. It is personal, so thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Malay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't say much. Ladies and gentlemen, I rise in support of this bill. I think it's a good bill. I think that it's important. I, one of the most intelligent things I've heard on this bill is what Lita Filippi and Chairman Amori have said, and that is tying it into the CPI. Look back on the history of the bill, and this body in the Senate, the state of Rhode Island, has raised the minimum wage seven out of the last eight years. Make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, that this bill, while you may not be a minimum wage worker in the state of Rhode Island, you may not be a small business owner who's subject to this bill, it's going to affect every single person in this room because the price of coffee is going to go up, the price of any object or any item that you purchase in a business that employs 
someone making minimum wage, a dishwasher, a cook. Doesn't matter what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. And I am going to vote for this bill, but we are, it's going to come out of all of our pockets. Some of it should, some of it should, but the idea of going to $15 an hour, respectfully, to my sister from Providence, respectfully, you cannot say to any business owner that your wages will go up 50% in one year and give them eight months notice. They will go under. This is a good start. We should support this bill. But let's not point fingers, ladies and gentlemen. It affects every single one of us. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Knight. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of the bill, and I'd ask this body to take a step back and take the 50,000-foot view of things. The debate here should not be about pitting businesses against their employees or pitting some groups uh, against other groups who might have had a harder or not harder. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what, our, our job is to look out for the safety of the community. Our job is to look out for um, sort of the flock as a whole in a lot of respects. We have, a, we have just a very few core missions, public order, public safety being one of them. And you know what one of the most pernicious and devious enemies of public order is, is poverty. You are absolutely right, Representative Wranglin Vassell. It is about poverty. And the minimum wage is one of the most effective weapons to combat it. We've had it in place successfully in the United States on a national scale since the New Deal. The New Deal. And it works. Time and time again, people have challenged it. The same old tired arguments come up. And time and time again, the march of time itself proves those arguments wrong. Minimum wage works. It doesn't put businesses out. It's the transitions that hurt. I get that, right? So it's on us to make a transition system that is fair and predictable and stable and all those things I was talking about in the last time I stood up. But our, we get lost when it's workers versus businesses. That's not what we're doing here. We're helping to alleviate the effects of poverty in our community through this measure and other measures that we pass. And with that in mind, it is absolutely the right thing to do. I wish it was more. Maybe someday it will be. But it's a very good reason to vote yes, because it is our sole responsibility to look after this aspect of our society. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Agello. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll, I'll be relatively brief. Um, I've been here 27 years, so I've heard a number of debates about the minimum wage, and I've heard some of our colleagues suggest before that we tie it to the consumer price index. I think that makes sense. But first, we've got to get the minimum wage to a level where it makes sense that it's a reasonable amount to pay someone. And that, that woman that Representative Ranklin Vassell talks about so um, emotionally and evocatively, that individual needs to be paid enough that they can support at least one child because that's the facts of life in Rhode Island. So I think we need to be aiming to get to $15 an hour as a minimum wage in the next four years and then go to raising the minimum wage with the Consumer Price Index. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be voting for this bill and I'll be supporting future legislation. Representative McLaughlin. Yes, uh, Mr. Speaker, members of the House, I would just like to reiterate that uh, this dollar an hour is recipro reciprocal. And when I say that, you know, people are going to spend, uh, the, the minimum wage earners are going to spend this, put this back in the economy, it's going to benefit the state, uh, and it's going to benefit business. You know, so with that said, 
that's where I'm at. Chairwoman, uh, I'm sorry, I'll go to Chairwoman after. Representative Lombardi. Mr. Speed, no objections. I'd like to vote the affirmative of items two and three, please. So ordered. Chairwoman Williams. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm glad about the debates that's been going on and everybody's passion and all everybody's interest and all that. And I'm one that know about being poor and it is what it is. Have to handle it. And I sympathize for those that are out there suffering because of not having enough. But it's interesting that when we have this debate, we have been raising the minimum wage for the last few years here by 50 cents. This is a dollar this time. But we talk about the consumer price index. Why has it Minority Leader Filippi, who says he's been saying it repeatedly, 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 and which he has. Why hasn't he submitted a bill? What is your point of order, Leader? I reference you to the budget debate two years ago when we did this. I put in a foreign amendment, which you voted against. Thank you, Speaker. I, I think she was referring to a bill that got vetted through committee leader, so... I know you're not, Chairwoman. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Leader. Chairwoman, proceed. I know when you're done, record. Chairwoman, and you're far from it. Proceed. Um, can you say that on the intercom? We want to I want to make sure that everybody heard what you say, that you withdrew. What? Proceed, Chairwoman. Proceed. Proceed. Just so no. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving the explanation of what was done. So that would be great if a bill was, and I'm talking about solutions. I talk about it in Labor Committee when folks come up with the two opposing sides on something. I said, did you meet? I believe I am a person of solution. So if you believed, if you believed in the fact that we needed to go to this consumer price index direction, then you should have been the one to at least introduce it or direct somebody in your caucus to do so. And the same to Representative Walsh. By virtue of you being in that industry and knowing that they are always, waiters and waitresses are often overlooked or passed on. That should have been on your radar to submit a bill with respects to them and their interests that you got up and talked about. Plain and simple, you said they are omitted from the increase then there was an opportunity, as it always is, for any of us to do better, connect something for the folks that you stood up and spoke for. And that goes for every and anybody. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, last slide. Leader Shikachi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, what a way to start a winter break, the last day before I, I, think it, I think we all need a break. I want to address the overall philosophy of the bill. Why I obviously support it, why I obviously we're going to vote for it. And I consider myself a pro-business legislator. I really do. I try to work hard so that we can create a good business environment to grow private sector jobs. We have heard from Washington, from our president, that we have the greatest economy in the history of our country. While, and we've heard that repeatedly, and I bet we're gonna hear that repeatedly until November as well. And it's because we have the greatest economy in our country, I think businesses can afford this. And I think it helps 
the working class. And I remember the debates because I used to sit over behind my Republican colleagues when I was a freshman from Representative Trillo about business and small business and how they couldn't afford it. Well, I think t the time is now, if we've never had a stronger economy than we have now, and if you share the philosophy of our president, then I think businesses can afford to pay in October, not today or tomorrow, or not this summer, but in October, an extra dollar an hour. While the minimum wage was never intended to be a living wage, sadly, for, for some of our brothers and sisters of Rhode Island, it has become a living wage, and we cannot lose sight of that. While this is a good beginning, and I know some people think that we shouldn't raise it, and some people think we should do it tomorrow, I think we can have that debate another time. The Senate has acted on this bill, and they've passed it. I think it's time for the House to do the same. I support this bill, Mr. Speaker, and I urge all my colleagues from the left and from the right to vote for this legislation. Thank you. There are no other lights. Clerk, unlock the machine. All in favor, please vote green. Those opposed, red. Clerk, lock the machine. 61 in favor, 5 opposed. The act prevails.